In addition to those, uh, sharing with you all that we obviously have started the recording, we want you to know that you are muted and you can also add the uh, closed captioning at the top. And if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. We will do our best to answer questions as we go throughout the webinar, but please note that we will have time at the end of the webinar to answer questions. And with that, I am graceful to hand it over to Denise. Good morning, everyone. As Alejandro mentioned, we're going to be talking about National Homeless Youth Awareness Month, but I did want to just give some context and some background as far as when that started. Uh, November was first declared National Homeless Youth Awareness Month back in 2007. Um, it is uh, now being recognized by many states, including California, um, as well as through federal legislation and also in local counties and cities. And so November is a time where there's many causes that are recognized, um, Homeless Youth Awareness Month and Homeless Runaway Month being two of those primary uh, um, uh, situations we want to reference and causes we want to support and raise awareness about. Uh, there's also some other events that we'll talk a little bit about, including Hunger and Homeless Youth Awareness Week, and these all coincide with um, Thanksgiving and some of the other causes we want to recognize around this time in November. And so why is this important? It is a great time to raise awareness about homeless youth and the issues they face. Um, we know school's been in session for a, you know, a month, two months now, and it's, you know, homelessness doesn't go away. We wanna remind folks that this is definitely something to keep at the forefront, that we wanna raise awareness about the issues that these youths are facing every day as they try to come to school. We wanna educate others about the, our educational rights and supports um, available through McKinney-Vento and what our students should have rights to. And it's a great opportunity to also spotlight the resources available, which is what we're doing here today, and to support youth who are experiencing homelessness, youth have run away, and youth are, who are in crisis. And so just um, a little background, November is also National Runaway Prevention Month, or NRPM. This is a national campaign that has been going on for many years, and so we did want to reference this. It is... Um, Hope facilitated by the National Runaway Safe Line and um, also referred to as shine a light on the experience of youth who have run away or youth who have experienced homelessness. Um, it's supported by the Administration on Children, Youth and Family and Youth Services Bureau, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And again, it's corresponding with the National Runaway Safe Line, which is 1-800-RUNAWAY. And so we did want to make you aware that this is a public awareness campaign that has been going on for many years. And so there's a lot of existing resources we just wanted to make you aware of. Um, on their website every year, uh, the National Runaway Safe Line provides a variety of resources. Um, I've used them many times in our county um, prior to developing our own. And so there's a, an easy downloadable toolkit they update every year, which is a great reference if you wanted some resources. Um, they have sample proclamations in there for local, um, whether that be for schools or and or counties or districts um, or cities. They have some great outreach materials and some social media graphics and messages. Um, so again, this is a downloadable toolkit. You can get on their website and we'll be sharing that link um, in the chat for you. They also did a handy flyer. So again, this is easy um, to download and you can use this at your discretion um, locally. Um, this is their national events flyer. And so two things I did want to highlight is they every year pick a certain day and they call it Wear Green Day. This year it happens to be on November 16th. So that's a great easy thing you could do to promote locally at your district or your school sites. Pick a day, November 16th this year, and um, advertise it. You know, that's a great conversation starter. Um, we you see some of my colleagues have their green backgrounds, which we'll be talking a little bit about, but um, uh, you know, previous years, it might have been purple, but now is green. Green is the color we want to go with. And so along with that, they also have the Light the Night event, which is on November 17th. And that's a really cool event where um, within your city or district, even you use a green light to bring awareness. Um, and so you light up the the building, the, the room, what have you. And um, that, again, is another talking point. And so these are just really good resources that you can use a quick um, click of your mouse and you can go to the website and download this. And then do, I just wanted to highlight, they have November 6th through 10th is education week. 
And so again, there's some resources for educators um, on their website already existing. You can go ahead and download those. And um, this is a great uh, resource for you. And then along with that, we had these great national resources. Um, PTAC has gone a step further and my colleagues, uh, Susie Terry and Christina Dukes who are online, created some wonderful resources along with the other fellow HETAX and I'm gonna pass it to Susie who's gonna share those with you now. Thank you. Thanks, Denise. Hi everyone. I wanna apologize in advance if I cough during this um, presentation. I'm sipping tea, so hopefully I'll be fine to get all the way through. But yes, you see the link um, on the slide will take you to the, uh, the page on the HETAC website that is dedicated to the Homeless Youth Awareness Month resources that we've created, but I'm gonna take you through um, a bunch of them now and let you know what's there. Next slide. Um, so this is a screenshot of that page I was just referencing um, that you can get to from that link. It's, you can also easily reach it if you just do HETAC.org. Um, the National Homeless Youth Awareness Month um, resources are on our homepage right now, a link to them. So they're really easy to find for everybody for November. Next slide. We're also um, at the HETAC going to go green for National Homeless Youth Awareness Month. So if you're familiar with our logo, which you can see in the bottom right hand corner, um, if you've been coming to webinars, we have um, made it green for the month of November. So um, if you visit our website starting on November 1st, you're going to notice that we're going to go green in honor of National Homeless Youth Awareness Month. Next slide. Um, so we have a resource webpage there and um, a couple of the things that you can find there that I'm going to go through um, one by one, but we have board resolution, we have some social media and Zoom resources that I'll show you. Um, we have activities for schools, a book and movie list. We have a page of awareness videos that you can use in presentations. Um, and a few other things. So I'm just gonna give you um, a little overview of each of them. Next slide. Um, the board resolution is one thing that is real kind of semi easy to do for National Homeless Youth Awareness Month. And I think it really makes, um, it can make a big statement when your school board or if you're from a community agency, your board of directors makes a resolution in support of Homeless Youth Awareness Month. Um, at the board meeting where it is made, you can always invite um, families or students um, with lived expertise. Um, you can have people make statements, you can do a press release about it. But one of the things, this is one of the things that I do at SDCOE every year. And the first year that I did it was the hardest because I had to actually write the resolution. I had to gather all the info and figure out what to put in it and write it up for the board and then each year after that, I basically pull out last year's board resolution and spruce it up and update it. Um, but for you guys, we actually have a pre-written board resolution that you can download from the website and just fill in with your own info. Um, you can, you could, there's spaces for you to add in your own data on number of homeless students in your district or LEA. Um, and a few other ways to personalize it, but the actual writing of the resolution has been done for you um, to make it a lot easier. So that's one of the things that is available. Um, I do recommend checking, making sure you keep up on your board approval process, um, the timeline to get items to the board so that you have enough time to get it submitted. Um, I usually try to get mine submitted so that it goes on the October board meeting so that it's already been done this year. Um, I missed the deadline myself, so my board will be making its resolution in November, but that's okay because it's it's National Homeless Youth Awareness Month. So next slide. Um, so we also have social media resources for you. Uh, Denise mentioned that the National Runaway Safe Line uh, also has social media. 
And um, both social media resources are really good. If you if you run a social media site for your program or for your school, this is a great, easy way to help raise awareness. Um, what we have on our site, I think might be on the next slide, but real quick, we have like preset message, like the one that you see on the screen right now is preset um, that you can download and then upload right to your like Instagram. Um, on this slide, you see we have the different um, sizes. So like portrait uh, can be used for stories if you do like Instagram stories or um, and then the square ones are are better to be used for like posts within Instagram or Facebook or wherever you're posting. Um, and then they're all branded with um, with like the green writing, but you can use one that's pre-filled out, like our, like the one on the far left, or you can, you can grab a blank one and add your own info thing. If you want to promote something going on at your LEA, if you want to use it, um, to promote little tidbits of info about what's going on in your community, um, this is a great way to do that. And then there's also a landscape if you need to do like, if you want to put it at the top of a website um, or a web page, if you want to, if you want to have it on your, um, on your district or charter school website, like for the month, that's like the front page. It's a super good idea as well. Um, and then if you go to the next slide, actually, let me back up for a second, Denise, because I, re I remember that I wanted to tell people about the downloading. So what you're looking at on this slide is a screenshot from the page where you will find these. And they look just like this on the page. What you want to do, the easiest way to get them, because I struggled with it, of course, um, when I was trying to do it myself, you just want to hover your cursor over the one you want. Don't click on it because that's what I kept doing. I would click on it and it opens it in a new page. And then I was trying to save it. Um, and it wasn't working for me on Zoom. But if you just hover over the one you want and right click and then um, use the save link as option, then it'll take it to your downloads and you'll be able to upload it easily. Um, okay, next slide. And that is in the instructions. I clearly struggled with it because I didn't read the instructions. Um, so on this slide, you're seeing a sample of some of the um, little like, did you know statements that you can use on social media? So if you choose like a blank social media um, picture and you want to fill it in with like little um, last year on our on our social media account, we did like a once a week, like, did you know message about homeless youth um, during the month to help bring awareness. And so we have some sample ones for you um, that you can use, or just to give you an idea if you wanna create your own, um, the types of things that you can put up there. And I wanna direct your attention to the hashtags. Um, so, we put on all of ours the hashtag for National Homeless Youth Awareness Month and also the National Runaway Prevention Month hashtag. They're very similar overlapping messages. Many homeless youth are runaway. Um, if you hashtag national, the NRPM, National Runaway Prevention Month with 2023, I think is the hashtag they're using this year. Um, they will follow your account. They'll like your account. They'll help amplify your message. They're great on social media. Um, so I definitely recommend using both the hashtags and include including National Runway Safe Line um, in your messaging as much as possible. Um, on our account, we go back and forth and cross promote. Last year, we were reposting some of their stuff. They reposted something of ours. So it's a really good way to like amplify the message. Okay, next slide. And then also, as Alejandra mentioned, we have created Zoom backgrounds for everyone um, to use during the month. We're, dem we're uh, demoing a few of them for you today. Um, and I wanna say the same thing about the Zoom backgrounds. So what you see on the slide is exactly how it looks on the webpage. 
Um, so you want to just hover over the one you want and right click and use the save link as. Um, for me, that was the easiest way to, um, to get it in. And then I think Jennifer mentioned um, she downloads it. She screen grabs it with a snipping tool and saves it as a picture and then is able to get it into her Zoom background that way. So obviously if you have any trouble, you can let us know um, and we'll try to help you if you wanna have your backgrounds up for all your Zoom meetings during November. Next slide. And then this is a sample calendar of activities that we created um, for the month of November. Um, this is just a really good way to spread like among your school sites, among staff, um, to just give them like a calendar of ways to learn more um, each day of the month or um, spread some information and awareness throughout the month. Everything that you, I mean, you can see on the slide, everything that we reference. there's a link that goes with it. So it'll link you to more information or link you to something new that you can read um, or an idea for um, other web locations besides ours that have good, useful information related to homeless youth. I love this calendar. Um, it's a great thing to have to pass out. Next slide. And then um, on the calendar of activities, we specifically um, noted also where Green Day, which is part of National Runaway Prevention Month um, campaign that we um, think it's important to like link up with and participate with. That will be, as Denise mentioned, on November 16th. Um, one of the things that National Runaway Prevention Month also does really well on where Green Day is you can snap a selfie or have someone take a photo of you and all your colleagues in your green and post it on your social and hashtag National Runaway Prevention Month 2023, which you see on the slide there, and also hashtag Wear Green Day. Um, I, we did that on our program uh, account last year. I also did it on my personal account and I write a little message about why Wear Green Day is important to me and so that friends and family and people in my personal life are also learning a little bit about uh, Homeless Youth Awareness Month and runaway prevention. And then a couple other samples from what is on that calendar, um, one of the days it suggests watch a brief video on youth or family homelessness, and it links you to the web page that we have that has awareness videos. Um, and you can send the videos, share it with your colleagues. We recommend registering for a HETAC webinar or a national homeless, a national center for homeless education webinar. And there are links to both of those on the calendar for that day. Um, we also suggest on the calendar one of the days, like consider making a donation to a food pantry. Um, and these are all activities and things that you can promote at your school sites and send around to your school sites so that people can get involved and participate in those things. So, and there's links, like I mentioned, for all of it. Next slide. Um, so I mentioned the awareness videos page a couple of times. This is a screenshot of what it looks like. Um, these are different videos. This actually came out of a request from an LEA. If we had a list of different like videos that we use when, when we're doing trainings um, or trying to build awareness or build sensitivity on school sites around um, just learning about homeless families, what, what their life is like a little bit beyond just always talking about the mandates and what we're supposed to be doing. And so these videos are great for use during Homeless Youth Awareness Month too. And you can find a list of them there on our, um, on our awareness page. And there's links to it all over the Homeless Youth Awareness stuff. So next slide. And then we have a book and movie list. Um, this actually, um, the book list was started when I was asked by one of the LEAs in my county if I had a list of book recommendations 
about homeless youth because a group of school site staff and teachers um, had a book club like a lot of workplaces do. They had their own book club on the side and they wanted their November book to be in honor of homeless youth because of Homeless Youth Awareness Month. Um, so I can't take credit for the idea, but I think it's a great idea. Um, so I started creating a book list and now we have added to it from everybody else on the HETAC team and other things that we hear about. And you can find that um, on our awareness videos resource page as well. Um, and then one of the movies, I always like to bring attention to the movie, The Home Stretch. If you, it's one of the movies listed on the page. Um, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. Um, it's not very long. I think the entire, it's a documentary. The entire movie is about 70 minutes, I think. So it's, um, it's not super long, but it really, uh, follows the, the journey of three unaccompanied homeless youth in Chicago. You learn a lot about their lives. There are three very different paths to becoming unaccompanied homeless youth and, um, you see the struggle of their school homeless liaison in the movie. Um, you see the struggle to find resources in the movie. So um, I hosted a screening of it when it first came out. And I told my liaisons, like, if you want your friends and family members to understand a little bit about what you do every day and why it's so hard, invite them to come watch this movie with you. Um, because it really gives a, a really good picture. Um the I believe you can get the home stretch on Amazon Prime. So if you watch on Prime, you can watch it on Prime. It used to be available for free on YouTube. It sounds like it's not there anymore. Um, but it is available. I I know because I watched it on Prime not too long ago, and I think it you can also get it through Apple if you have Apple, but um you may even still be able to buy a copy of it from the producers. If you go to the website, I'm not sure they're still selling it. The movie came out in 2014. So it's been out for a while now, still super relevant. Um, and then there are other, um, obviously, movies, recommendations and book recommendations on that site. Next slide. Is that my last slide? It is. I'm turning it over to Jennifer. I just want to mention really quick before I sign off that when you go to the Homeless Youth Awareness Month resource page on our website, there's also a downloadable printable PDF um, for schools that just give a list of different ac activity ideas that you can do at your school. So like hosting a blanket drive during November or, or a sweatshirt drive or... Um, just other like school site level activities. If you're in most of them, I've talked about like getting on social media, doing a board resolution. But if you want to print, print that from the website and look at it with your coworkers, that's there as well. Okay. Um, thank you all. I didn't even cough. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Jennifer. All right. Well, I'm glad you didn't cough, but take care of yourself, Susie. So <laughs> uh, it's good to be here this morning. Um, I don't typically get to uh, participate in these uh, webinars, so I'm very excited to be here. And I am also, I'm also excited to be able to add to just the plethora of stuff that I think HETAC has pulled together in a really neat space and place. And so I do encourage you uh, to check this out, go on, take some time to look at it. Uh, do some planning for yourself um, or help your LEA uh, to plan. And so I'm just going to go ahead and walk through a couple of the slides moving forward. Um, this particular picture that you see here is a sample of a book that we publish out for all of our LEAs in LA County. And so we have quite the, um, uh, the number of LEAs. And so we put a whole slew of stuff together, including many of the components that Susie talked about um, already, a book list, a video list, uh, a planning a tool, uh, different ways to intercept. Um, we do a lot um, with the national organization that Susie referenced, as well as um, just different um, other entities across the nation. There's a lots of different, if you do some research, there's lots of different um, uh, LEAs and school districts and um, 
equivalencies to county offices across the nation that also do some fun things. So I also periodically uh, pop in and see what Wisconsin's doing or check out what's happening in Arizona, um, just to see if there's anything to borrow uh, to add to our already long list of items. So um, so this book lit here, I believe um, we're just about to finish up ours for uh, the November 2023. And I think I mentioned to Denise that um, once we have it ready, um, she's willing to send this out to um, all of our individuals who are participating on this particular um, presentation today. So you're welcome to um, borrow um, any of it that you'd like. Um, it's there for your using, as well as the HETAC website, which has um, a, ton, a ton of it. So the booklet that I'm referring to is kind of this um, page here. This is a cover sheet. So we didn't actually provide you with the 2023 booklet yet. So it's just the picture uh, that's on the side here. So and inside of this, um, again, it's resources to connecting students and families to services. We have a calendar of events uh, for November for sites to engage. And as mentioned before, we have a book um, and video list um, and lots of websites you can visit as well. So I think you can push on to the next um, page there. One of the things I do and have been um, really trying to advocate for is in this process of understanding um, about the awareness is really tapping into uh, the usage of youth voice. And there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. Um, I really would love it for, um, I know Kern is out there. I, I we, we are very excited about their work that they're doing uh, with their Youth Voice Amplified, which is actually um, done through a podcast process. So I'm hoping that they're, they're okay with me sharing <laughs> because um, I just think it's absolutely amazing. Uh, they are one of our HIP grants, um, if you're familiar with that um, innovative process. And their um, podcasts have been just really, really amazing. And so great way to amplify youth voice. But there's also other lots of other ways. We've had districts like Hacienda La Puente have um, filmed students and shared student voice that way. Um, I've seen students interviewed. Um, I've had them actually do the planning for the month. Um, so that they actually are the ones who are planning for what we will be doing for the month because if they have a lived experience and their lived experience is critical in the process of helping others understand what they are either going through or have been through and, and their voice is very, very powerful. So um, so shout out to Kern for uh, this work and I just can't thank enough uh, to them for the work that they're doing on here and amplifying that student voice. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move us on to the uh, next slide there. Um, one of the other things I think is always um, important too is just the importance of visuals. And so each year um, we have done some type of visual that we've pushed out uh, related to students experiencing homelessness. I love the infographics um, because I find that people uh, have a tendency to be able to connect well with the colors, um, the, the data that's there. It doesn't have to be a lot of data. You can take one data point and really just explode it with, with the colors and information um, and help people kind of walk through. Uh, we would recommend that you obviously use your local data. Um, I think that's always powerful to use. These can be um, stuck inside of your PowerPoints. They can be uh, they can be photocopied and hung around your offices. They can be um, pushed out through your websites. Um, but we always love to see these particular infographs um, to help uh, really explain what's happening in the lives of the family and the children that we're working with. So, and I guess I mentioned the local data, um, I think is really important to use um, what, what you, and there's great websites out there that actually can help you make these now. Um, there's, I think there's Canva, which we use a lot, um, or Canvas, I don't know. We have Canva and Canvas, and I can never remember which one is which. Um, I just know that uh, the Canvas website or the Canva website has a great way to do infographics. Um, and they can actually, they generate most of it for you. So you don't have to be a, um, an infograph whiz in order to put these together any longer. So I'll go ahead and push this on to the next. Um, uh, and these are some great, if you are looking for data and you're, you're not really sure where to go, or maybe you don't have access to your own local data as well as you would like to, um, we always uh, hear from our, our, our grand, amazing um, CDE staff about different data points. Points. In particular, um, these were really interesting data points that rolled out this year. This is a statewide data points from DataQuest. So this is our 
some of our annual enrollment report information. Um, very, very fascinating information that I think it's really critical for people to know. Um, so I know this isn't a data presentation, but I think these particular, these three particular points um, it, are really, really critical when talking about what's happening in the, the climate and culture in the world that we work within, within the state of California. So particularly that there's been an increase by 9%. So we've seen a very high increase. If you've been analyzing your annual data at all, um, I, I, we have seen a significant increase here in LA County. Um, so that is mirroring what we're seeing here um, from the 20, uh, and it's the crazy thing about this is this this is 21, 22 uh, to 22, 23. And so we are seeing that increase um, and it's pretty significant in the data that we're seeing in the 22, 23 school year. So, um, and then it, the, the identification of what that actually looks like, how does that pan out? And then also additionally, um, the I think this is a very telling point is uh, despite the increase in homeless student enrollment, um, there was also a drop in overall statewide enrollment by 1%. So we lost a lot of students in the state of California for various reasons, um, but we've had this increase um, of identified students who are now um, homeless. So really, really critical dates. Um, this is using some of the DataQuest annual enrollment. I believe the link is there. And so um, if you are struggling to pull, again, your own local data, you can be more than welcome to borrow any of these just to display them um, or push them out. Um, these are great also tidbit points to push out on your social media. Um, they're great uh, little tidbit points to um, post around um, for staff to really understand the impact that's happening um, with our students experiencing homelessness. So I think we'll push on to the next um, one there. Another thing that's been really, really exciting, which um, I've been able to intercept with quite a bit, and I would encourage you, uh, if you haven't had a chance to play around with the GIS map um, or the geographic information system map, uh, I would encourage you uh, to pop in and, and try it out. Um, it can be found under the homeless student uh, data webpage under the GIS tab. And I believe in a slide or two um, that we'll, we'll actually be walking you through this. Um, these, this is a great visual as well. Um, it's, it, I would recommend that you play with it um, before you try to present around it um, because it does have some different features that I think are important to understand before trying to, to present it. So don't go into it cold if you're trying to present about this, but I definitely encourage you to, to take a look at it. Um, it provides access and information specifically around census day. So that's important to keep in mind. Um, it's census day data. So if you're looking for more your cumulative data, um, it is, is not on the GIS map at this time. It's mostly census data. So, and the data for the GIS map will reflect the same data seen in the annual enrollment report. So, um, and I know there's a link there as well where you can grab some of that information. Um, I, mean, I think we're going to walk through some of the GIS pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and move us to the next slide there. Um, so this is on the web page, the data web page that we were referring to previously. And if you go to the top, um, there's a number of different tabs. Um, you click on that GIS tab, and then that pushes us um, over to the next um, slide there. So this is what you originally pop into for the Census Day Homeless Student Enrollment um, by district. This is the GIS map. By the way, um, this is all the brainchild of uh, CDE and Sarah Jean Zocklin. So Sarah Jean uh, pushed this out last year through our data and donuts and walked through um, a lot of these pieces. I know this was hours and hours and hours uh, worth of work um, that he, her and her team did. And so, and I do also know that they have been um, really flushing through it to see if there's other things to add. So once you come upon here, you can see uh, the larger the dot um, based on the map legend in the lower right hand um, it is where we see the uh, number of homeless enrollment. So the larger your dot, um, the more student population around students experiencing homelessness uh, you would have. And then there's some homeless percent um, enrollment TK um, and district count pieces on the right-hand side there. So now this is more of a holistic picture of the state of California. The great thing about this is then you can drill down into your specific area. And so I think we're moving forward to the next slide there. 
And so, um, as this mentions, is on the bottom left corner of the homeless census data enrollment by school district map. You can select the homeless enrollment change by district tab, and that will give you a different picture. I believe the colors change so you can see the differentiation. And this map also displays the difference in homeless enrollment between the two most recent years of data. So just something to kind of keep in mind when you're moving through this particular map. But I encourage you to pop on and play with it yourself. Um, I do find with this particular, oh, there, thank you. There you go. You can see the differentiation um, and the different colors. Um, the uh, addition, this is a change map. So this is change by district. So this is what I call movement, um, our mobility of our students and where they're, where they're moving to or leaving from. Um, um, and so it's a very interesting, um, an interesting thing to look at. So, and then I think I'm going to move us on to the next slide, which I actually believe takes me over to uh, some activities that possibly you can do with your district and school site staff. So uh, I um, each year uh, place my orders for my green ribbon. So you can see there's a green ribbon there. There are organizations that actually do um, a couple of different things. One, you can purchase fabric ribbon um, and make your own, which I have done <laughs> past. Um, you can also, uh, there are companies that actually make uh, green ribbon, um, fabric ribbons that you can actually purchase. There are also, um, I actually stopped moving and I move away from um, ribbon because I, there was too, we have too many LEAs and too many people I was giving ribbons out to. So we actually moved to stickers. And so um, you can go online, Amazon or anywhere on online and find the green stickers. Um, and so we actually purchase rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls of green stickers, which uh, we send out uh, to some of our LEAs. Um, one of the things that we do because we have so many LEAs within LA County um, is I do uh, during the month of November, I'll have some raffles um, where I will raffle off um, using a raffle wheel, a wheel of names uh, to actually raffle off stickers and send them out via our jet mail system uh, to our LEAs during the month. So. The other thing you can do is um, they have these neat bracelets, the jelly bracelets, which kids love to, to have and staff loves to have as well. I think one of the things on here as well is that um, Susie had already mentioned this about the National Homeless Awareness Proclamation. Um, we actually just submitted ours, so we're very excited about that going through for our next board meeting, and then we'll be um, ready for November uh, for National Homeless Youth Awareness. So um, the other thing too, is as mentioned, Susie mentioned, was uh, to wear green. We have a flyer we send out. We call it uh, Green Fridays, wear your green on Fridays. And so we post that up all over the place to encourage people to think about wearing green on Fridays. And then we take pictures. And one of the things we'll be doing this year is, I think as Susie mentioned, is we'll be posting on our social media some fun pictures of people wearing green. So um, I mentioned the dist uh, distributing bracelets and um, ribbons. One of the other things we did find was that there are also green uh, ribbon pins. So, so they're actually, um, they look like the, like a, a pin you would put on your lapel. And so you can order mass quantities of those as well. We, we do that as well. And I, I, uh, oh, she's in, <laughs> Alejandro's trying to show. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to see it. There you go. <laughs> and then, um, as we mentioned to encourage to do, uh, wear a uh, green day. So, and then we just do various things. I try to, I have, I have an office, so I have a green ribbon. I tie on my door and I wander around handing out stickers to all of my staff and people across. We have a huge building, so love wandering around. Um, anytime I'm going out to a district in the month of November, I'll take stuff with me. Anytime we have an event, um, I've got green stuff all over the place. So we just really try to hype it up. So, and we laugh a little bit because if you know anything about mental health or mental um, health awareness, um, there's a little bit of a, a synonymous usage of uh, green ribbons as well in mental health. And so I always say you could re you could reuse it. So, <laughs> so we have kind of a fun conversations about those. So. And I think we're moving on to the next uh, slide there. So some excite activities, uh, school site activities, you could always do a non-perishable uh, food backpack school supply or hygiene item drive. This is a great month to do that. November is a great month to do that. Um, we've seen uh, sites will create holiday food baskets to provide to families, particularly around the Thanksgiving holiday season. 
Um, this is a great time in November to also push out or start sponsoring families for holiday related um, activities and for the month of December, so prepping in the month of November. Um, we've seen neat things where they hold um, poetry or essay contests. Um, we've also seen if you've ever been um, part of or involved in Red Ribbon Week, um, we have borrowed some of the Red Ribbon Week tactics. We've used green cups and stuck them in fences to make um, you know fun, fun uh, ribbons on the fences. Um, and so there's just lots of different activities. If you're a Pinterest freak like I am, um, I pop on there constantly and look for just different activities that can be used um, via Pinterest. Um, so ideas that you can use um, for uh, your sites as well. So, and I think, um, go ahead and move on to the next slide there. Um, we also really try to take time during November, where we present all year long, but we try to be really cognizant in the month of November about um, presenting before school boards. Um, I would encourage you if you can get into your school board meeting or on your agenda for school board meeting um, to do a presentation. You can take your infograph, your PowerPoints, um, and really just make awareness, pass out green ribbons. It's it's kind of a fun a fun thing to do. Um, a staff meetings, getting into those staff meetings, um, parent meetings. And the great thing about this is that a lot of the times I will use November to remind LEAs that's a great time to train and it meets your annual requirements for training. So it's a great time uh, to push in on staff meetings and, and let them know that um, you know, you're meeting, you're meeting your, <laughs> your annual training by letting me come in and this is a great month to do it. So, and I think we'll move on to the next present. Oh, there we go. And so um, this is also a great time uh, to uh, encourage people to also do their own training or to uh, come up with other different ways to do training. So I know the National Center for Homeless Education provides um, self-paced online trainings. I know there are webinars that are located on the California Department of Education. And then our HETAC um, recording, obviously this, this will be recorded, um, but also we have many recordings um, of all the presentations that I know Denise and Alejandra and her team have been doing throughout the year. Um, and then also uh, their Schoolhouse Connection has a ton of webinars that they offer. They're always offering um, some great pieces out as well as the National Association for the Education for Homeless Children and Youth um, also provide webinars as well. So, and I think I'm moving on to the next slide there, which I believe I'm handing back over to Denise. So Denise, I uh, will let you take it from here. Thank you so Perfect. much, appreciate it. Perfect, thanks Jennifer. Um, so we've shared a plethora of resources that, that you can incorporate and use locally at your districts or school sites. Um, and now we're going to jump a little bit into some community activities. Um, engagement at this level, of course, will vary depending on your capacity, but we did want to provide these resources. Um, so it's something you could look into locally and see um, if there's partnership opportunities. And so again, um, you could do presentations. That's always a big one, obviously. And November is a great month to get on the agenda of your county homeless continuum of care um, uh, agenda, sorry, to present your local city council or community-based organizations. Um, I know here in Contra Costa County, we actually partner with our local COC or continuum of care, and we do a whole coordination of events that happen in November. And so we definitely try to get in, in those planning meetings. Um, we want to coordinate efforts. We think that's a bigger reach, and that's more folks that you can get the information out to and make sure they're aware of homelessness and how we could help our youth. And so... Um, again, depending on your capacity and how close you work with your local COC or your city or any community-based organizations, these are just ideas that you might want to consider. And so um, I mentioned this a little bit, but you could partner on various levels. Um, we want to recognize, of course, there's Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week. There's I mentioned we partner, um, we have a whole committee in our county that plans very early for Homeless Awareness Month and they do a whole separate calendar of activities. And so we wanna make sure we share that information with our local education liaisons as well. Um, when, I've, when all possible, we like to coordinate. I think that's a good message. And then again, we get the message out further. Um, your city or county might do a, a community forum um, using one of these videos that we presented. That's a good opportunity if you could partner locally with your CBOs or your county and host a virtual screening night. Um, and then you can have panel presenters. I think that's a good way to tie in our community-based organizations with our educators. A lot of times we're all serving the same family and students. And so anytime you can partner and um, do an event like that, I think it's a great opportunity. 
And so um, you can also do cross-training events. This is a good time to get on the agendas with your partner agencies and do, if you have five minutes, 10 minutes more, share some of this data, talk about your services and education, talk about how you identify families and how you can coordinate. November is a great month to do this. Um, you could also host a food drive in collaboration with the food bank or other community organizations. So again, part, whenever possible, we know our capacity is limited, but if you can partner, partner, partner with some of your, your um, community organizations and your county programs, it is a great time to partner. And then um, again, we would be <laughs> remiss if we did not go back to this poster. We know California Department of Education has these posters available. We wanna make sure these are up at every school site. It's a great time to spot check, stop by some school sites, see if they're up on the wall, see if they're accessible. Are families walking by those or are they in a location that's maybe not as visible? Those are some good times to reach out to your school sites, stop by and make a friendly visit. If they need more posters, it's a good time to push them out this month, but definitely utilize these posters and you can make sure to request more either through, we can get you in contact through the HETAC or you can go to the website and actually there's downloadable versions in both English and other languages. And so always go back to the poster. If you don't have those up, get some out to your school sites and make sure they're up and your families are seeing those. We also um, make sure to get those out to our shelter providers in our county, our public libraries. If they have a parent poster board, um, you know, you, sky's the limit. Um, wherever your parents and families are, are accessing services, we wanna make sure these are visible and that they have this information. And then we've provided a lot of resources today, but there's even more. Um, there's a lot of really great websites and you'll get all the links along with this PowerPoint presentation that we'll be sending out later. But our, our intent here is not to overwhelm or to give you too many um, things to think about, but we do just wanna give you the options available so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's a lot, you can start small with the, the stickers and just opportunities to bring up this topic. And then you can go as far as your capacity will let you. Again, partnerships, um, reaching out to your school sites. If you have a, a team of liaisons, if you're lucky enough, you know, there's so many options here that you could um, utilize that you don't have to reinvent. And we wanted to make this an easy process for you, but also provide this information um, so you can, you know, bring attention to the work you do and help our students and families that we know need, um, people need to be more aware of the barriers that they're facing and really um, how we can assist them. And so again, these are other resource pages and we'll provide all those links to you. Um, there is the youth risk behavior survey data as well. Um, data is always very powerful. And so just utilize your CD, your Department of Education data, your local student enrollment data, um, mental health data, any health survey data. These are all, some people really respond to data and your graphics. Um, so again, use what's gonna work for your local um, county, city, district, and um, really know your audience. You know, some, your counties really like data and your school sites might respond better to a scenario or a story or a, a video. And so again, our goal here was just to provide you with a ton of resources and you can pick and choose what's gonna work best for you. Um, Jennifer mentioned these, I believe, but NACI or National Association for the Education of Homeless Children and Youth and Schoolhouse Connection are two very great resources. They have so much information on their websites. Um, also, of course, go to the HETAC website. We have a lot of information there. But just again, wanted to provide you some really good um, locations. You can search these. There's anything you could, you know, want to look for webinars, um, data, uh, tip sheets. He has all of those as well. But again, just um, a lot of resources to either share locally with your districts and school sites and liaisons or with your county and community based organization folks as well. This is just a lot of information and some great places to locate um, things that will help you in your work. And so we know we are already in October and this is coming up quickly. And so, you know, again, this is not all gonna help you your first year if you're just starting out, but we wanted to give you some very easy tips. And knowing that it's coming up quickly, um, this is something you could either use this year or next year if you started, you know, you could start in the spring, start planning for the fall. Um, but think about what you're gonna do, get as many people involved as possible. We all need help. Think about creative ways to publicize, um, you know, these um, screenshots behind our Susie and Alejandro are using, these are, these are great easy ways to bring attention. And so again, if you're on a Zoom call next month, have your green background up. And if somebody, hey, what's that about? That's when you can share the information. It's a really good conversation starter. 
um, always recruit partners. I know at COE here, we we have a, you know, we just decorated our hallway. We use some of our staff here to help us out with that. And so we wanted to raise awareness to the Wear, Wear Green Day. Um, we put our district and our local data on that board. But again, we are constantly recruiting partners. And so we're also working closely with our county providers and coordinating efforts for that month and all of our activities. So can't do it alone. Um, definitely recruit your partners. And then if you're planning events, you know, think about location, how many volunteers, this is this is scaling up, this is a big process. And so if you wanted to do a big event next year, might be a little difficult given the timing now, but definitely start planning for next year, work with your community-based organizations. If you're gonna do a food drive, your food bank, um, sky's the limit. There's so many opportunities here in November. And with that, I'm going to open it up and see if there's any questions that we had in the chat and or if any of my colleagues that helped present had anything else they wanted to share. Um, lots of resources and we're so excited to share these with you. Denise? Yes. Um, there was a question in the chat about using EHCY funds for the green ribbons. Jennifer, is I feel like that's is Leanne still on the line? I feel like, I feel like that's, um, is that what you use for your ribbons? So in the past we've used, yeah, EHCY funding um, for awareness. So, and um, yeah, I'm assuming we should be able to additionally use ARP because ARP uh, ties back into usage of EHCY, so. Um, Leanne is still here. So I think she would tell us if we were wrong about that. I'm sure she would. <laughs> but I do believe you can buy awareness materials. Oh, she wants to be unmuted. You guys. What am I doing? <laughs> While we are unmuting Leanne, um, I wanted to add for everyone that when you use the Zoom background, just as a reminder, the, wor the words will look backwards to you when you look at yourself, but they're not backwards to the other people on your Zoom, if that makes sense. Anyways, go ahead, Leanne. Hello, he talks, and hello, everybody that is on this wonderful um webinar. I really, really appreciate um, all the great work that you guys have put together. Um, this was one of these activities that as a singleton for a very long time, I couldn't do a whole lot. And so I'm very thankful that you have created such great resources. Yes, you at this point, you can use your EHCY, your Education for Homeless Children and Youth funding, if you are a recipient of those funds. You can also be using your American Rescue Plan Homeless Children and Youth Funds for this. This is building awareness. This is um, professional development. This helps with your trainings. This um, also helps with collaboration and coordination with outside your agencies. So thank you for unmuting me. And yes, spin, spin, and spin. <laughs> Denise, there was also a question about whether the color changes each year, and the color has historically been green, but if you talk to some of my other LEAs, <laughs> no names mentioned, they'll, they'll tell you who they are, um, they actually have a different color that they use, but we have historically followed along with the National Runaway. Uh, organization, which they do use green. So uh, we've historically used green. So. Yeah. And I would second that. Um, I know at one point it was purple, I think, but I know there's a lot of medical awareness <laughs> events also happening this month and they've kind of taken the color. And so, yeah, we, we also follow the national color and the wear green day um, is where it came from for us. I do agree. We should buy a green car. Um, thank you, Carrie Wolf. I appreciate that. Any other questions that I missed in the chat? As long as you are using your ARP funds to buy the green <laughs> car and you ask for capital expenditure approval first. I love that. Yes, there you go. Excellent <laughs> clarification.
Give it one more minute. I was thinking a matchbox, Carly Ann, so just to throw that out there. <laughs> And as we mentioned previously, these uh, resources will all be posted on the HE, all the HETAC resources will be on the website. We'll be sending out a copy of this presentation with all the links, um, as well as the video link. Um, but definitely feel free to reach out to HETAC if you have any questions about any of our resources or um, anything else that we could assist you with. There is a question in the chat that um, I think just got buried kind of fast. Um, I don't know who wants to take this one, maybe Jennifer. Um, the difference between the dashboard and data quest and where can we find our year end data versus census day data? I can give you some things and anybody is welcome to add. Can you say the first part again? Because I think there's a couple things there. The difference between the dashboard and data quest. Okay, so the dashboard, the California school dashboard um, is a point, point in time grab um, of data. So it's going to definitely look different than uh, the the uh, census data that you're gonna see on DataQuest. DataQuest is a repository for collection of data and it's um, it definitely does have mostly census data on it. Um, the cumulative, I usually uh, work to gather my own cumulative data um, because I'm looking for served um, versus necessarily just cumulative, but that also comes from CalPads. So your cumulative would come through CalPads. I don't know if anybody wants to add to that. Um, the dashboard, uh, I would just be a little careful with it because it's um, once it's grabbed, I always say it's it's kind of old. The problem is, is the California State Dashboard is used as a measurement tool, particularly around differentiated assistance work. So I don't know if anybody else wants to add anything to that. So. The second part of the question was about year-end data versus census day data. So year-end data, again, I would I would be working looking at your your CalPads data. Um, mm -hmm. Data Quest, I find, um, takes a long time to get data into it, and I don't always. I usually find more of our census day and data quest, but I don't know if somebody wants to also respond to that piece. Well, because census day data is the first Wednesday of October, you typically will get that data around December or January. And then the cumulative data from the year before, we don't usually get that posted until November or December. So they're coming out about the same time However, one is a point in time count, one is a cumulative, one is from the previous year, one is from this year. And so we typically ask LEAs to compare apples to apples. So you want to compare your census day data last year to this year, your cumulative from last year to the year before. And typically your cumulative data is larger than your point in time count. And I know the answer to Deanna's question about when, um, I think it was Deanna or Al Al Alice's question, but it's in my brain somewhere. I have to go grab it unless somebody else knows. But I do not believe that the census day data is the same as what's grabbed for the dashboard. I believe the dashboard collects at a different time than the census day data. So they're not necessarily the same. I'm going to go see if I can find I my notes. I believe that that is correct. I will just add that if you are on DataQuest, when you're selecting what report you're, when you're putting in your search terms, um, there's a place where you can click to get like a full description of exactly what data you are seeing. And it'll tell you if it's census, like point in time data, cumulative data um you just have to you just have to be willing to like click around on the different like glossary for each of the reports and things like that when you're looking at it so that you know exactly which data you're looking at the other person to really connect with around data who is actually the queen keeper um i call her the source of truth is sarah zocklin so i'll drop sarah sarah 
Sarah Jean, um, her information in the chat box, because she's also a great person to have those conversations with. She does our uh, state data and donuts, and she's really the person that um, when I'm struggling with something, um, I'll go back to. And she has connections to with other people, like if you're struggling with CalPADS related pieces, she's the one that I usually send, send people back to.